glory. exploring how Jesus loves everyone. That's our Bible point today. So remember, what do we do when you hear the words, Jesus loves everyone? Thank, Thank you, you Jesus. Jesus. Awesome. I'm so glad that Jesus loves everyone. Thank, Thank you, you Jesus. Jesus. Let's have a little fun celebrating his love with another song. Let's get a little crazy.
Decker, the decorator crab, is our Bible memory verse buddy. How much do you know about de decorator crabs? Let's find out with the this or that challenge. Okay, so our question today is, do decorator crabs attach starfish or sea sponges to their shells? So, let's say if you think that they put starfish on their shells, why don't you wave your hand in the air? But if you think they put sea sponges on their shells, why don't you wave your hand down here? Alright, so is it starfish or sea sponges? What is it? No, sea sponges. They lied. There's a, there's a starfish right there. <laughs> that's true. Sorry, that's. Well, hey, maybe it will tell us in our memory verse, Bible memory buddy video that we are going to watch now. <laughs> hey, I'm Decker, and I'm a deep sea dwelling decorator crab. Now, just because I'm a crab doesn't mean I'm grouchy. I totally dig the way God made me. Would you look at that? I decorate my shell with some of God's other cool creations, like seaweed or sea sponges. My decorations don't just make me look good either. These awesome accessories help me blend into my surroundings so I stay safe from other animals that may want to turn me into a snack. Let me tell you a little bit about some of my other crabby friends. My friends the spider crabs, they get creative too. They stick sea anemones on their shells to sting predators that may want to have spider crab for dinner. <laughs> gotcha! And get this, my Japanese spider crab friends can grow to 13 feet across. They're the largest crab in the world. I bet that's bigger than any person you've ever met. I love how God made us crabs, but I'm really impressed with how God made you. You people have fingers and toes and ears and all that weird stuff called hair. God even put something inside your heart called love. Big or small, short or tall, people are all important to God. One time in the Bible, some parents brought their kids to meet Jesus and Jesus' friends didn't like it. But Jesus told his friends, let the little children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. Jesus loves everyone, especially kids. That's because you can show adults what Jesus' love is like. In the Bible, book of John, chapter 13, verse 34, it says, So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other, just as I have loved you. You should love each other. So, lead the way, kids. You show the world what God's kingdom is like. You tell the truth and encourage people when they're bummed out. You work hard even when it's tough. You create masterpieces that bring a smile to someone's face. So, forget about blending in with the crowd or doing great things for Jesus someday. You matter right now. I'm a unique part of God's creation. I show God's creativity and attention to detail. And you're even more special. You're God's extra special creation. You can show the world what God is like. You're an important part of God's family. Jesus said it, so it's true. So go ahead, keep showing people in your world, Jesus loves everyone. of love. It's a book that's been helping people grow closer to God for thousands of years, and it can be helping us today, too. Our Bible memory verse comes from John verse 13, chapter 34. Do you remember it? Let's say the verse together. I'll say a line, and you repeat after me. Do you remember? So now I'm giving you a new commandment. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Love each other. Just as I, just as I, have loved you, have loved you. 
You should love each other. You should love each other. You got that? Great. I love that God's word helps us know how to live and how to love. And I'm so glad to know that Jesus loves everyone. Thank, Thank you, you, Jesus. His love will never give up on us. Now, I want you to think of who the most loving or most welcoming person is that you know. Hmm. Who is the most welcoming person? And what makes them welcoming? I want you to think about that and imagine that you're in this person's home. I think of my grandparents. You know, they're always pulling on your cheeks and saying how big you got and they're giving you cookies. Very loving, very welcoming. Okay, so, so let's pretend that you go to your grandparents' house and it's just you and you're getting all the attention and all of grandma's chocolate chip cookies because mm. grandmas always make the best chocolate chip cookies. And then all of a sudden your little cousin shows up. And this is like the cute little cousin, he's kind of a baby still, and your grandma goes to this cute little cousin and pinches his cheeks just like she did yours, and pats his head and gives him some of your cookies. Hmm. I don't like that. I don't like that either. So, that would probably make you a little, little angry. Little man, you want to say that to my grandma? No? No, you can't have her? Well, a similar situation kind of happened to Jesus when he was teaching in crowds. So, sometimes he would be teaching, and his disciples are kind of like his bodyguards. And these little kids would come up to him, and they would want to see him. Just like the little, your little toddler cousins, they want to see your grandparents. And Jesus' disciples would say, oh, no, 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 you need to stay back. So that would be like you going to your toddler cousin and saying, no, my grandma. You can't have her. Get away. Not probably the nicest thing to do, but that's what Jesus' disciples were doing. So let's see what happens when Jesus' disciples try to stop these little kids from coming to him. We are going to read Luke 18, verse 15. People were bringing babies to Jesus so that he would bless them. When the disciples saw this, they scolded them. Then Jesus called to them and he said, Allow the children to come to me. Don't forbid them because God's kingdom belongs to people like these children. Uh-oh. So what happened? Here come the parents with their little cute toddlers and babies and they're coming to Jesus and they want Jesus to bless them and the disciples are saying we don't have time for this Jesus has to teach, he has to talk he has to see people <clears throat> so what did Jesus say? Let, he said let the people, could the kids come to me, right? Allow the children to come don't mm -hmm. forbid them because God's kingdom belongs to people like these children. That means God kingdom belongs to you and your cousins and your siblings and the bully at school too. He is everybody bully belongs to God's kingdom, old and young. So Jesus' disciples wanted to keep the kids away from Jesus. They didn't want them. He thought they thought maybe the kids were going to bother Jesus or take up too much time. And instead, Jesus loves everyone. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. And he's always paying attention to us, even the littlest kids. He cares about us all the time. And you have people here at church who care about you too. So remember, Jesus is always paying attention to you. Jesus knows everything that happens to you. He always cares. He always loves you. And he always wants you to come to him. Today's Bible story shows how much love Jesus has for kids. Kids just like you. But he doesn't love just kids. No? Nope. Who does Jesus love? Jesus loves everyone. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like to read you something about our friend Jesus. As you listen, I want you to close your eyes and imagine that you're hanging out with Jesus. Maybe you're sitting on the couch in your living room, or you're getting ready to have a snack together at your kitchen table. Can you picture it? Where would you like to meet with Jesus? 
Now I'm going to listen, or now I want you to listen as I read. Jesus loves everyone and pays attention to us. Jesus sees you. There's not a moment in your day that he forgets about you or shuffles you aside just because you're a kid. To Jesus, there's no such thing as being just a kid. Back when Jesus was on earth, leaders like Jesus usually ignored the kids and talked with just their parents. But when his disciples tried to shoo away the children, Jesus said, knock it off. Not only did Jesus want to spend time with children, he wanted his disciples to be more like them, more like you. Pretty amazing, huh? He wanted them to trust like children trusted him, and to turn to him like the children turned to him, and to be his friends like the children wanted to be his friends. He wanted to be friends to all. So rest assured, Jesus sees you. He's listening to you. He hears you. He loves you. Today and always. All right. Our last little activity is some of those crafts that you can make and send pictures of us of them to us. Um, we have two options this week. You can do one or both. Uh, going back to our story, when Jesus was teaching and the kids wanted to come to him, what did he do? Did he push them away? He welcomed them, didn't he? And it feels good to be welcomed. It feels good to walk into someone's home and say, oh, I'm so glad you're here. So glad to see you. Because remember, Jesus loves everyone. Thank you, Jesus. So, you can use this month's craft supply to make people, make the children that came to Jesus. You can make a head, a body, you can make yourself, you can make a kid you know, and then that's something that you could share with us. Your pictures so that we can see your people. Um, the other thing that you can do this month, this week, is think about when you feel, how, think about your feelings. When we feel happy or sad or disappointed, does Jesus still love us? Of course. Jesus always loves us no matter what our emotions are and so you can use your paper plates and crayons markers or even construction paper and glue to make some emojis maybe it's an emoji that you've been feeling lately maybe it's something that um you feel a good good emoji a bad emoji but no matter what your emoji is we would like to see it and we remember that jesus loves everyone thank you jesus Thanks so much for joining us today. We are so glad that you've been here to uh, discover that Jesus loves everyone and pays attention to us all. Uh, don't forget, we have our Facebook group going that your moms or dads or grandmas or grandpas or other important people in your lives can help you um, show us what you're up to and help you get entered for our participation challenges for the potential to win a prize. We can't wait to see you there. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, Thank you for reminding us that Jesus sees us. There's not a moment in our day where he forgets about us or has his attention somewhere else. We are important, we are loved, and we are treasured. Uh, Jesus sees us and he's listening to us and he loves us and don't let us forget that. Help us remember each and every day, today and always. In your name we pray, amen.